Hello guys, this is the fifth tutorial on C++ basics that we are going through. Uh, in last tutorials, so we went through the data types, different types of data you can give to C++. Um, we also learned about how to use those data in the program. Today, in this fifth tutorial, we are going to talk about uh, something called constants. This is a very important part. Um, all the basics chapter are pretty important to, to make you a better programmer but um, this will also help you a lot later on if you understand what I'm talking about in this tutorial okay let's uh, get it started um, today we're gonna talk talk about uh, three types of constants uh, literal define and declare the constants in C++, these are the three types of constants that we got. All right. <clears throat> now, literal constants are the most easy to see and most obvious constants of all. They are, when you see it, you know that that is a constant from your common sense. Okay. Uh, let's see what are the types of literal constants that we have. We have integer numerals. We have floating point numerals. We got boolean literals, we got character literals, and string literals. Okay. Now, <clears throat> an integer numeral is a number without decimal points. Duh. Now, this includes the example 23, 56, 8. Those are all integer numerals, integer constants. Okay. Pretty simple. Um, in C++ representing number you don't have to put anything special any special characters like a double code or single code to to write a number in C++ in fact if you write those they don't become number anymore they may they become either string or characters as we talked in our earlier chapter okay um, and it can also be defined in other uh, uh, base in, in C++ you can define it in a decimal which is a base 10 octal value which is base 8 and also hexadecimal value which is base 16 if you don't know what those means um, let me know I can make a completely different tutorial out of those how to convert from one to the other but octal value is basically you don't go over um, over seven okay seven is the maximum value that you can have in octal value system all right hexadecimal value you cannot go uh, for more than um, 15 okay and after 10 after 9 10 is called as a uh, 11 is B 12 is C and so on F in this case is 15 okay and those three numbers that you see uh, 255 0, 377 and uh, 0 xff that's all the same for a C++ program okay when you go when you give those C++ can interpret those as the same number all right uh, looking at these these two these three types of uh, base and uh, looking for signed and unsigned representation for constant in C++ um it's made pretty easy and pretty clear on c++ documentation about how to use those um as i said earlier octal is a base 8 number and when you're giving it to c++ you have to start with a zero in front if you're giving me giving a octal number okay if you're trying to give a hexadecimal number uh, which is a base 60 number you have to start with zero x okay 0 and x then the hexadecimal value all right um, and uh, base 10 system you already know base 10 is the, that's the most common um, number system that we use um, this number doesn't go more than 10 okay that's, that's the base 10 base 16 is they don't go over 16 they can't even go to 16 16 is the number are below 16 okay um, 
now in C++ you can also force in to be unsigned by adding a U or capital U at the end of the number uh, that's how you can force you can force uh, if you write a decimal number that does not have any number more than seven you can actually if you write zero in front of it C++ is going to assume that you are probably giving an octal number okay that's uh, same with the uh, unsigned or signed ins you can change uh, unsigned into signed sorry signed into unsigned into by giving u or l in the end okay and that's also considered uh, constant integers okay now looking at floating point literals um, <coughs> uh, in floating point literals we we represent uh, any number that that have got decimals or that have exponents large number or very small numbers okay uh, in C++ you can write a decimal point um, number by adding a period uh, and you can also write uh, uh, um, scientific notation okay by adding a e okay um, e can be added to any number where e means power by 10 to the number after e okay um, i'm gonna show what that means uh, and you can also have both e and period in a same number all right uh, for example 3.14 the point there that means that it's a floating point uh, literal okay 3.14 that's the value of pi uh, 5.97 e24 in c++ that means 5.97 times 10 power 24 okay uh, 5.9 but eh, in fact that's the that's the mass of the earth um, and that 5.97 times 10 power 24 is how you write in C++ as 5.97 e24 okay other example is 1.67 e negative 27 that's the mass of the proton is uh, it, it can it can be interpreted as 1.67 times 10 power negative 27 all right not very hard uh, in here also you can force a number uh, to be long double let's say if you declare some number as a float if you want it to be long double later on you can uh, force that number to be long double by adding a l after the number okay or if you have declared it as a double you can force it to be float by adding f or capital f in the at the end of the number and you can have all these three characters in the same number in in floating point literals okay uh, also in case of e both big e and small e they are in c++ is case insensitive uh, in this case okay it's not case sensitive you can use either small e or big e in writing those kind of numbers all right uh, now we got boolean literals boolean literals are pretty, pretty easy to understand there are only two boolean literals in c++ they are true or false and it can be represented by bool data type as we talked uh, in our third and fourth series okay there there is something more with the boolean literals um, we will talk about that in in more advanced uh, tutorials all right uh, now we got character literals it's only one character okay when you write just one character for example a that's in a single quote that's very important single quote is very important that represent that it's a character okay um, single quote a single quote b or single quote big a etc those are the examples of, of character literals okay and it can only have one character okay uh, to represent character literals we we'll put them inside single quote as uh, as I told earlier and this is done because you have to differentiate a character from uh, 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 identifier that you might have declared earlier okay that's very important uh, so if you just write one it's called it's a numerical literal but if if you write one inside single quote it makes it a character literal see the difference that's why we put single quote for a character literal 
okay and also uh, inside single code is a character literal whereas if you just write a it's a variable identifier named a remember from the earlier chapter that's the variable identifier not the character it's very important sometimes this may confuse and while writing a program these mistakes happen to everybody so be careful about that now we have uh, string literals and string literals is just combination of character we talked about string literals in our earlier tutorial uh, they are inside double quotes um, for example I gave this example earlier Dean inside double quotes that's a string literal okay now we have something called escape characters and this is the exception to where we have one just only one single character um characters the characters and both string can have a special character and call the escape character uh, escape character are very important because without uh, without escape characters it is impossible or at least difficult to express these these values otherwise okay um they proceed proceed by backslash and a character okay uh, for example backslash n that means new line backslash t that means tab okay um uh, you can write those inside a single code if, if you want them to be a character value or you can put them inside a string for example in this second example right here you can see line one I have put slash n then line 2 slash n and line 3 when you print this string out in, in your output you're gonna see line 1 line 2 and line 3 in three different places three different lines and slash n slash n you are not gonna see those okay they, they are just escape character that means next line okay and <clears throat> I've also written it in this way uh, slash double code is also escape character uh, I'm gonna put the list of escape, escape characters in the description below. Uh, check check those characters. They are these are very important things on C++. When you when you want to let's say when you want to print um, double quote uh, and write double quote and close it with a double quote, you have to write it in this way as you can see here. Double quote black backslash double quote double quote backslash double quote double quote close okay and that's how it's gonna print those otherwise you are not gonna get what you expected um, here are a few list of escape characters that are important um, I'm gonna put these in the description below and uh, you you have to remember some of those these are important okay <coughs> now we have something called defined constants uh, to define a constant we use something called a preprocessor directive I should have told about preprocessor directive earlier about in the first chapter but I'm gonna talk about it here uh, preprocessor directive start with a hash uh, like that so uh, to define a constant we we are gonna use has define okay this has define is called a preprocessor directive okay um, let's see using has define you can define the constant that will be used frequently for example if you use has define pi 3.14159 has define new line is going to be a character uh, backslash new line okay then this uh, this have defined two constants called pi and new line now you can use this pi and new line in, in your code below just as uh, just as the uh, just as the constant that we talked about earlier okay uh, as a matter of fact C++ is uh, what C++ is going to do is whenever it encounters pi and new line is going to replace those with those things that you have defined earlier okay uh, it literally replaces those numbers okay uh, 3.14159 uh, 
uh, when, whenever you see pi in your code whenever the compiler actually sees the pi in your code it's going to replace with this number and whenever it sees new line in the code it's going to replace with a with a new line character okay <coughs> now uh, a directive is not a C++ statement okay it is in interpreted by preprocessor okay and it is interpreted before compiling your source code for for the actual program so uh, so that's the reason why there are no semicolon you might have noticed those they does not have semicolon in the end because it is not a C++ statement and C++ is not responsible for identifying these preprocessor directive okay has include is also a preprocessor directive those are not compiled by C++ all right that is those those uh, commands are interpreted before compiling the program okay um, so it applies to has include as well that's why you don't see semicolon in the end of has include okay now there are also another constant called declared constant uh, we use another keyword const very important uh, using a const prefix with a specific data type you make a variable unchangeable throughout the program okay for example if you declare as a declare a variable as const int a equals to 23 and a is going to have 23 for rest of the program no matter what it's never going to change you cannot change it when you try to change it compiler is going to give you an error saying that there, you cannot change it okay uh, our const char new line is that okay i forgot semicolon there uh, supposed to have semicolon but anyways the that the new line is going to have uh, backslash n all throughout the program that's never going to change that's a constant after that okay you cannot change no matter what there's no way to change those those things and a lot of times a constant variables becomes really important in a program okay uh, they are completely like regular variables except that you cannot modify after you initialize that's the only difference all right so though these are all the things about constants uh, please rate comment and subscribe In next chapter we'll we'll talk about operators and then we'll talk about basic input output and we'll end the basic right there okay and after that we'll we'll go to control structures functions very exciting stuff you will you'll be able to do a lot of things with control structures and functions um, so please subscribe and I'm I'll be posting new videos really in very quick succession now and um, so stay tuned subscribe thank you have a great day